Welcome to the Screamcast episode 5,253. I am Sean DeRager, and with me is Stephanie Crawford. Hey. And uh, Brian Henderson's here too. Hey. <laughs> missing uh, missing today, of course, is Mike Delaney. He is, uh, I don't know where the fuck he is, so he, we're just good. We're not going to wait. We, you either show up on time or you don't make it on the Screamcast. That's the rules. I think he had some. I think he had a conflict, actually, but and that I knew about. But it's fine. Well, um, awesome. yeah, woo! It's been a while. I'm like I'm rusty with the uh, podcasting. So everyone, uh, you know, give just us a little bit of take uh, over. Or yeah, Brad's take gonna... over. Fuck it. I, and I'm right. gonna go. I'm I'm gonna go out to eat. I'm gonna go to brunch. I'll <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> No, so we're gonna we are going to do uh, just what we, what we've been watching, and um, you know as we're moving into 2020, and uh, you know, so what's up, everybody? How have you how have you guys been? We've we've been we've been good, Sean. Thanks for asking. <laughs> have you been, Sean? I've been I've been good. I've been very good. Uh, I did start a new podcast, everybody. Uh, Traitor. I know. I'll talk about it later. This one. How are you gonna do that? It uh, it has to do with my audio books that nobody cares about on this show. So um, <laughs> I'll talk about that a little bit later. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, let's 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 start. I'm I'm curious what you all have been watching. I know Brad's, of course, he's watched about five thousand since we, since we last spoke. Um, but uh, but yeah, let's let's do this. Awesome, Sean. Thanks mm-hmm. for thanks for the lovely intro and 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 thank you for the kind words. Um, I'll start off just because I'll start off light and I, I'm sure you guys will enjoy this as well as, uh, hopefully listeners. Um, I actually watched, uh, it, it's never been released. Um, apparently the widow of, um, uh, Mitch Hedberg, uh, helped get this like out there. Uh, it only premiered at Sundance and then Mitch Hedberg kind of closed it down. It's something that he wrote, directed and starred in called, uh, Los Enchiladas, Wait, um, Mitch Hedberg shut it down. Yeah, yeah, he didn't want to have it released. Apparently, he so his ghost said no. <laughs> well, it was it. Was, well, he died in what two thousand two thousand one. A while back, yeah. And he made this in ninety nine, and it premiered oh. at, or ninety eight. It premiered at Sundance in ninety nine. Oh, okay, 90- I thought you meant this new Sundance. I'm like, okay, this oh, is a twist. No, 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 no. Mitch Hedberg <laughs> is is gone. And, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it, I I was trying to read more about it. Like why, um, I, I guess it didn't get praise like he thought it would. Um, but yeah, it just, he never, never released it and it only screened at Sundance and that's it. So, uh, but copies did get out because I guess he did try to get distribution at some point. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I really couldn't find a lot of information about that. I know that his widow tried to get like a distribution and more uh, people to look at it. But honestly, it's just been kind of ignored. And it's really odd because I've always felt Mitch Hedberg was universally loved. Like I have never met met anybody that has said that Mitch Hedberg is not funny. Like I thought he was one of those comics, even during his, his time that we all love Mitch Hedberg. So I was very excited to uh, check this out. I finally got a copy of it and um, it's, it's really fucking funny and it, it's, it's, it's not a failure. It's very much playing off kind of that uh, clerk's, esque thing it's it's about two buddies uh one is played by mitch hedberg um and it is dealing with two guys that are working at a mexican restaurant called los enchiladas and they're prepping for cinco de mayo because it's the busiest day of the year for any taco joint so it's basically that and they're wanting to leave early and stuff like that so it's got a very you know plain plot it basically deals with you know uh eccentric uh you know people that work there the employees also people coming into the restaurant asking for absurd things very very kevin smith clerks clerks esque but it stands on its own it's not like oh that's a ripoff it's literally you know once clerks came out 
uh, we got a kind of a lot of films dealing like with that just slacker. Right, that slacker everyday life just dealing with shit, you know, working a dead end job, whatever it may be. Just like how Pulp Fiction spawned a bunch of, you know, um, not I, people always say ripoffs, but I don't like to say that. But there are films, you know, like, you know, Scream, Halloween, um, you know, uh, Clerks, like I said, Pulp Fiction. Um, what's some other one? Alien. They all spawned a lot of these so-called or gremlins is another yeah. one these so-called like little rip-offs but i really don't consider them that because a lot of these films i think stand on their own and this one does it's it's very funny mark uh mark Harmon's in it and he's really fucking funny um so it's just it's just a like this kind of group this comedy troupe just sitting around just talking and telling jokes and funny shit happens it's not very eventful it's just you know, very down to earth. It, it honestly, it's also one of those films that you can kind of connect to if you ever worked in the fast food restaurant, just the same as Kevin Smith with clerks. If you ever worked in customer service, you can relate to that, especially a video store, convenience store, whatever it may be De dealing with the public. You know, that's kind of what this, this is about. And uh, it's, it's actually kind of uh, cool to see much Mitch Hedberg, not wear the shades and be, you know, shy on stage. Cause that's, Basically, it wasn't really an act. That was like how he felt. Um, and he doesn't have the sunglasses on and the hair in his face. He still kind of has that same like dry talk that he does. But it's really, really good. And it's really surprising that this hasn't kind of came out and, you know, is a cult kind of favorite. But it's just unheard of. I actually didn't hear about it until a couple years ago. And I've always watched Mid Mitch Hedberg specials and was a big fan. But I had no idea he made a movie. And that's because it really wasn't broadcast. It played once and that's it, as far as I know. But uh, yeah, it, apparently, uh, the, like I said, the, uh, the, the widow tried to get it out there and wanted more people to see it. Uh, it's online. Um, I mean, this is a movie that's not probably going to get distribution. Um, so it's just one of those things that we have to share. Uh, huh. and, and and talk about because it, honestly it will just disappear which is a shame because Mitch Hedberg made a funny movie and I don't know it's just odd to me like it, it kind of blew my mind when I found out about it found out about it like a couple years ago and then have been searching for it and found it and it's really fucking funny so you don't think so. it's something that would be put on the <clears throat> festival circuit no I mean this is this uh, movie's 21 years old now and it's just no one it's not like something that has just been released it's it's been cert like been going around in circles for a number of years it's just not very well known it sounds like something so, that's I don't know, uh Brad. I sounds think like you some, can make it happen yeah it sounds like something that may be like a certain distributor that you might know <laughs> kind of sort of maybe could make it happen and have people discover it. I, don't, I don't i'm just i'm, just throwing out I'm a big oh. fan i didn't know about this so <laughs> well I on I I also don't think it's shot on film. Hey, so, we've I, seen VHS things on a big screen at the draft house. Like, yeah. you keep naming well, no, excuses, and none just, of them are going to fly. Yeah, it's just it's I I don't know why. Like, it it kind of honestly, I'm sitting there like thinking this is just going to be a wreck. Like, it's just going to be it's going to be unfunny and kind of miserable because honestly, the worst thing to ever watch is a bad comedy like bad comedy <laughs> that's fucking true terrible. yeah and they're really tough to get through and i laughed and like it's very very funny hmm. you know and you know i'm not saying we have the revolution of comedy here or anything but it's just something that i definitely definitely should not be forgotten about because i've seen tons of bad comedies and this is definitely not one so it's i maybe i think it has to deal with because i mean if you know Mitch Hedberg, he, he does have like this social anxiety and he had, you know, anxiety when he got on stage. So maybe he just didn't like the way he looked and acted. And that's the reason why he didn't release it. Huh. I, I don't I don't really know. Um, but I uh, honestly I tried looking it up and it's just very vague, the information on it. So I don't know. Huh. But check it out. It's it's funny. And hopefully that if it creates enough attention, which I don't think it will, uh it it could go somewhere, but honestly, I just think it's kind of dead in the water and will disappear over time. 
Yeah. All right. So if you're listening, start getting those revival screenings going. Do it for yeah. Mitch. Yeah. Do it. Stephanie, how about Thanks you? What about uh... guys? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I will talk about a horror movie. Ooh. Oh, wait. Yeah, this is a screamcast. <laughs> That's okay, Brad. Flipping the script. <laughs> Um, I watched the latest in the Into the Dark series on Hulu um, called My Valentine. And if you're, for anyone not familiar, the series, it's um, horror movies that are set on different holidays. And they're on Hulu. Oh. And as you'd imagine, with um, something with that kind of concept, they vary in quality levels. Um this one is written and directed by Maggie Levine, and it's about a pop singer um, who's been through a traumatic, abusive relationship with her former songwriting partner, but she's finally starting to heal. She has her best friend in the band with her, and um, after a show, we meet this former partner. Uh, his name is Royal, and um, he buys off the bar to close early pretty much so he can talk to her alone and he gets some psycho fans of his to make sure no one comes into the bar um and he comes in and basically tells her to stop performing the songs they wrote together because he wants his current girlfriend to perform them because her pop career is starting up and she's an exact clone of the lead Valentine. And, um, oh, by the way, Valentine is played by uh, Britt Barron, who's Mark Marin's daughter in Glow, the Matt Simber uh, oh. kind of character. And I love her. So I was really excited to see this. So Matt basically, Simber, the director? Yeah. Well, you know how he helped start Glow? He's I had like no his, idea. Oh, yeah, he helped start Glow. He, like, directed uh, some of the start of it. And Mark Maron plays the Matt Simber stand-in. Like he's you know, Matt Simber is one of those guys that has done everything. It's crazy. Okay. Yeah, you should watch Glow. It's great. And the last I, season... I, I have watched a couple episodes, and it's really good. I just haven't sat down to watch it. Janice watches it, and I've... Like, I was, like, kind of brushed it off at first, because, I obviously, I hate TV shows. And I'm sitting there and I'm working like on my computer and I'm just hearing it. And then I like kind of got drawn in for like a few episodes, like during the third season watching it. And I'm like, yeah, I probably should watch this. But well, that's the one you should especially watch because she writes a script and he's like, this is great. I'm going to help you out. And so he's like going through Hollywood and he's like, look, I know I fucked you over years ago, but my daughter's really talented. Don't hold that against her. And I just feel like you might appreciate the father daughter trying to get a script produced kind of angle. <laughs> anyway, the movie. Um, so it's, it's kind of strange because on one hand, um, the performances I really enjoyed uh, aesthetically, it's really gorgeous, and it's really steeped in that trend right now of the pink and purple lights, um, but I still like it when it's well done. Um, the lead guy, um, Benedict Samuel, he's really young, but he's really good. Uh, he's Because uh, he's someone who needs to be as charming as he is scary, and he's really good at ramping that up slowly, and also showing that he's like basically a spoiled baby underneath it all so i was very impressed by him being able to portray all that the problem with this movie is that it introduces uh two side characters who were the opening band for valentine and they keep cutting back to them like trying to sort their relationship out and it goes nowhere it, it's almost insulting what happens uh -huh. to one character and literally nothing happens to the other character and there's so much screen time given to them for no reason. So I feel like the script needed a little more work. Because um, I think the script was just interested in the relationship between the two pop stars and the creepy, abusive producer. 
But I don't know if Hulu was like, yeah, but you need a lot of young characters to draw everyone in. I don't (laughs) know, but it wasn't handled super well. But overall, I do recommend it, um, especially if you're kind of familiar with the whole uh, real life thing with Titanic Sinclair and Poppy and Mars Argo. If you know about that drama, it's directly based on that. I didn't know anything about it going in, but a few minutes in, I was like, oh, crap, this is about that story. (laughs) So, yeah, it's it's not perfect or amazing, but I think it's really solid. And, uh, you know, I'm really interested in seeing what uh, Maggie's going to do in the future. Hmm. It sounds just like you just summed up every End of the Dark movie. (laughs) I was going to ask you guys about that series. I haven't seen the series, but how many movies have there been so far and what's kind of is it you know there's been about maybe 16 yeah this is the second season this was the 17th one okay and i don't watch all of them oh they're Um, fucking tough to get through oh my god (laughs) (laughs) yeah and a lot of them i'll be like ah i'll watch this on this holiday and i will just forget about it Hmm. i think it's a cool thing to do um very cool but you know it's it's like honestly it's like undeveloped ideas and scripts are made into movies. It's like the stuff that they don't think that could possibly draw people in with a young, young cast from, from Blumhouse. Like that's what it is. It's it's Blumhouse making it. And it's, it's literally like your typical Blumhouse movie at the theater where it's not very good, (laughs) but it like, you could see potential in it, but it's not very good. It's like the, the, the talented it, with potential theater or like, theater. And the thing is, is they all have like decent ideas behind them. I, I think, uh, I think the only ones that I've really liked was, um, I'm just fucking with you. Um, all that we destroy was okay. Um, but like for the most part, oh no, all of these are just awful. I haven't watched them all yet just because I really got burnt out on these because it's it's like you're watching it but you know you're going to watch a bad movie. But, <laughs> yeah. Well, but oh. So going into these things because like historically they're just they're 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 really bad. I think it's an interesting enough concept to continue supporting, but I would like whoever's making the decisions behind the scenes to be like, let's develop the scripts a little bit. Oh, I will say the pop songs in this movie are awesome. Like I actually want to download them after. Um, So if if nothing else, it's a very pretty movie with really good music. So. Yeah, there you go. But it's the thing is, they're all competently made. Like they all look good. They, they oh yeah, sound... this one looked really good. And it had a lot of Scott Pilgrim versus the World like editing influences, which I thought was pretty interesting. But I mean, these things they're 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 not making even the slightest dent in in like anything. Like people are not paying. I think the only one that people paid attention to recently was the Thanksgiving one. Uh, Pilgrim because it was directed by um, the Marcus. collector guys. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, which I haven't seen, but I mean, like, I, I honestly, like, I've liked one and that's even a stretch. Did you see I'm Just Fucking With You? Did not you yet. See it? Did you see, oh, I thought you might have seen it because it played at South by and I was like, because I didn't watch any End of the Dark stuff and I watched I'm Just Fucking With You and I was like, oh man, this is actually, you know, pretty good. And I really liked Adam Mason to begin with. So, I mean, all Adam Mason films, I think, have this, like, really great idea and execution. And he's kind of all over the place and kind of sick and twisted himself. And the movie was good. So I was like, oh, man, I can't wait to watch all these horror films that are just made and put on here. And I watched, like, like, the first one was The Body. And it takes place, and it was Halloween. And it's about a hitman who kills somebody. And his... uh. Basically, this raid took place with all these like kids and people during Halloween on this uh, street where his car was parked and his all his tires were flat. So he's dressed up like in a suit and tie and he's carrying this this body that's wrapped in saran wrap really tight. And these kids see him. They're like, oh, man, awesome costume. And they're drunk and they invite him back to their party. So he goes because he's looking for a way to get out with the body. And I'm like, wow, this is fucking great. Nope. 
20 minutes in it's like when well, this is well, this should have been just a short film i look it up and it was a short film originally and i'm like just should have fucking kept it that way like <laughs> and 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 i forced and like nacho Vigalondo had one called puka and i'm super excited about that that was probably the worst one of the bunch and puka's <laughs> running around south by destroying shit and flipping bikes and trying to eat tacos the whole time and i'm like this is such a good <laughs> thing but this movie the movie isn't good but anyways huh so, do you think there's a value and maybe you have talented people but these particular ideas aren't quite ripe yet but I, I, they can I say think... that they made a film and it was on something like Hulu and then they can use that to try to sell their future products that are more mature. They have the experience under their belt. Right. I, I think I think that's kind of what it's resulting to with uh, with a lot of these people, because I, I can see uh, uh, some, you know, it, mainly the female directors have gotten bigger jobs after their Hulu films, which is great. And because I know Chelsea Stardust, you know, she had All That We Destroy, which well, actually wasn't that bad, um, you know, and that I guess helped her with the voice, but to voice her next film when she made Satanic Panic, which they came out kind of, you know, close to one another. So obviously she, she already had the job, but at least gives that extra boost. And then, um, I can't think of the one. Uh, it's uh, uh, um, culture shock was was it, and it wasn't very good. But it gave uh, that woman actually got another gig uh, because culture shock's fine. Like it has a good idea behind it because it really taking in like today's concerns and then putting it in like in. I mean, it's a horror story anyway with immigration and stuff like that. So. It it really made it. You know, that's a horror movie in general, but it really like it did something creative. But again, it's just one of those things where it just felt undeveloped. But she she got a she got a job too, which is which is great. But maybe I just wish they were better because oh, it just seems it just honestly it just seems like a waste of money. Like I don't know who's watching these things. Like I mean. I it's – it, well, <laughs> you haven't watched all of them, though, Steph. That's true. I don't I, – something, um, even though I can see the inherent flaws in them, I'm I'm glad they're doing it, and I'm glad they're working on it. And after – maybe I should just watch them, like, once a month. I, like, binge-watched uh, a lot of these, like, back-to-back. -back, so binging just, doesn't sound like the way to yeah. do it. Yeah. No, I, I watched, like, ten in, like, three days, and it was literally okay. the worst thing. Worst At that point, it's not there. It was, yeah, it was honestly, it was worse than watching all the Saw films in two days. <laughs> anyway, sorry, Sean, what have you been watching lately? Oh. Well, let's, uh, let's see. Um, I want to talk about a movie directed by uh, um, Travis Stevens. That uh, and he actually won a uh, the Fangoria Chainsaw Award for uh, was it best uh, best first feature. And that's called that's girl on the thir on the third floor. I don't think I've been enough, on enough last year to even talk about this at all or anything. Um, and I don't know if any of you have talked about it. So, uh, but I finally watched it and uh, I absolutely loved it. And I'm sure most of you have seen it already because I'm always the last one to see stuff like this. But um, I really loved it. CM Punk giving off the young Henry Rollins vibe for sure in this in this film. I've never really seen him in anything. I know he was what, what like a wrestler or a mixed martial arts guy, and uh, now he's getting into acting. And I really liked him. I liked that his character was very flawed, <laughs> kind of a, like uh, misbehaving while his pregnant wife is back home as he's trying to fix up this house that he's buying to help improve their future. But you know, <laughs> he's kind of a, an ass, uh, and that leads to you know shit going down with his character and uh, I liked the small cast I liked the creepy feel of the house and the, uh, the splattery gooey special effects the practical effects were always great and uh, and I I didn't realize that Travis Stevens hadn't directed a film before I know he's produced countless films right. and I think movies he produces are always worth checking out um, he has like a really good eye for casting and 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 the right scripts the right stories to tell and it was fun to kind of see him behind the camera on this one. 
and uh, I really, really dug this film. Um, and I, I don't know, I don't have too much to say about it other than that, that, that if you haven't, if you've been sitting on it and not watching it yet, um, hopefully this little Chainsaw Award, Chainsaw Award, yeah, Chainsaw Award will, uh, give it more of a boost, because I know it's, like, gotten, like, middling reviews, which is bizarre, um, but I was curious well, what, you, what your thoughts it? on it. Was it South By or Fantastic Fest? Yeah, I yeah, I saw, I saw the South By, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, when I was there, I did hear, it, it almost seemed like 50-50, but since it had a wide release, I've been hearing a lot more positive things. And CM Punk is a wrestler, and I thought casting him was genius yeah. in this kind of role, because I don't follow wrestling that much. Like, every few years, I'll get into it for one or two months for some reason, and then I'll just forget about it. But uh, he was always very charismatic, and mm -hmm. his Twitter is hilarious. So I was like, that's great. Get like a charismatic, wiry, punk rock looking guy. Like, that's perfect. That's I love great. that he's blasting like all the punk rock that I love, all the, all the music that I love in his headphones. But he's like, he'll wear a suit. He's like a lawyer, I guess. His character's like his lawyer. But I mean, all of us, he's a year younger than me, but it's like all of us who grew up, you know, yeah, we're all have real jobs, but we're all still, uh, you know, we're all listening to the same music we listened to when we were these rebellious kids. <laughs> I love that. Just a little older. You're still cool. Yeah. You're still cool. <laughs> yeah, he thinks no, he's I, a little I, too cool in this, though. But that, it goes great with his character. You know, it's like he still has that seed of like, oh, I can do whatever I want, you know, uh, type attitude. But um, he really should because he has, a, he has a kid on the way. Settle down. CM. Punk. Well, I mean, I, I think it's 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 part of the house too. Like yeah, it's totally. not yep. fu fully fully him. But yeah. no, I, I really enjoyed the film too. I, I mean, even though I'm probably a little biased with, with Travis Stevens, yeah. I, I still think Oh, did we lose your Brad? Yeah. You can hear us Brad, he dropped out. Okay, and I can do my oh. joke real quick. Yeah, CM. <laughs> Try to be more of a country mouse punk than a city mouse punk. Uh... <laughs> so what are you saying, Brad, with the, your, your bias with Travis Stevens? Um, and that's all we heard. Oh, I was just saying <laughs> that I liked how cum was coming out of the walls. <laughs> it was an ectoplasm. It what? was an ectoplasm. It was... No, that's that's what it was. It was... It well, was, I mean... Uh, you know, the house with, was ejaculating. Without spoiling anything, it makes complete sense. Yeah, uh, no, that's, I thought that was because I thought that was really fucking great. Mm -hmm. I thought that was clever. Yeah, no, it's a, it. it's a film that I want to watch again because I think there's a lot of um, things seeded into the story and things that we just kind of have noticed, like oh, that's gooey and gross, and you know what's going on. And as you go along and learn about the house, and, and if, if, uh, eventually you get the it? final. Do you reveal. see Travis Stevens' like uh, note sheet for the the crew like every day? Like it was like fifteen <laughs> things the movie needed to be, and I thought a clever one on there was that um, the continuity they were fucking with. So mm -hmm. in each scene or each day, something would be moved in the house. Okay, you're right. So like, if you see something in one location in one scene, and then it's in another location the next, that's like on purpose because it's it's literally the house uh i thought that was really yeah clever and then that also clever but i want to check the imdb goof page now <laughs> <laughs> someone had a heyday <clears throat> and then um and then the other thing is that he said like this movie is really wet like mm -hmm. that don't forget it's wet and i, I thought that was kind of uh cool because it reminded me of like you know something that cronenberg probably told all of his you know people or something yeah. like that but yeah, yeah it's a good flick yeah, no, I, I like Travis Stevens, and I, I mean, we, he's been on the show and everything, and we, we goof around back and forth on Twitter now and then, and, but it's oh, like, yeah, I don't, no, I, I like, guy. you know, I don't feel like I'm biased, because, like, I genuinely, genuinely respect his work, that's the only, no, you know, I mean, I, like, I, I wouldn't, too. like, care if, if I didn't respect his work, because there's a, many people that I meet and I'm friendly with, but, you know, I don't gush about their shit, you know, just to do yeah. it, and, I hate uh, it when I don't like someone nice. I work. know, it's I'm the like, worst, please. yeah, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, but but he's, you know, for me, with the films he's been involved with, it's always worth something. He has a, just he has a good eye and a good kind of, uh, he knows, I, I don't know, he, 
He just he, has he a good eye for it all. People. He brings and he's a f- Yeah, totally. He's a good collaborator, and I would love to see more movies of him actually directing and more instead, wet, sticky, icky movies, please, Travis. Instead of Mohawk. That was probably the one that really... I really oh. didn't like. Well, he produced that. I, I haven't seen that one yet. And that one, I... Yeah, I, I love uh, We Were Still right. Here. I, I thought that mm-hmm. was amazing. But yeah, Mohawk, uh, he asked me, and I'm like, no. <laughs> 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 so, um, all right. So I uh, I got around to finally, finally tracking down a copy of The Trail. Um, now, this movie probably doesn't ring any bells to a lot of people, and I'm sorry, but I will talk about it because I really, really loved it. So um, most people know Ronnie Yu from um, more more or less probably Bride of Chucky and Freddy vs. Jason. Bride uh, of White Hair. Yeah, probably the Bride of White Hair. And then, yeah, well, Sean might know Warriors of Virtue. Because that might have been his uh, his thing. <laughs> I don't um, no, I haven't seen that actually. You've never seen Warriors or Virtue? no? You've you've talked about it, and I've it looks totally like my shit. That is hundred <laughs> percent what something you should watch. watch. It's basically so that's like Power the, Rangers, like yeah, with animals, shit. right? Yeah, yeah, it's like fucking rabbits. <laughs> what? Um, yes, you've That's never incredible. heard of Warriors of Virtue? No, I there just love that description. <laughs> like, yeah, Warriors of Virtue. It's it's basically um, this uh, this 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 boy goes to this uh, you know this this like far off land that's I don't know magic and shit, and he he gets in between <laughs> this like shit. bad guy and these like this this group of like fucking rabbit people, and it's and it's a kung it's a kung fu movie. And it's and it's and it's really fucking fun. Like it's it's good. It's good. It's it's good for kids. Like I'm not saying it's a great movie. Like you're gonna watch it, be like, oh my god, the Criterion saved this. No, it's just like, man, this is a lot of fucking fun. But anyways, so Ronnie Yu uh, has been making films for a long, long time. Ever since the '80s, a lot of kung fu action films. And um, so when I remember when I think, you know, Bride of Chucky was announced and then I saw the director, I'm like, who is that? And I look it up and I'm, you know, as a you know, 14 year old or 15 year old, I'm like, what the fuck? Why is, why is Ronnie, this guy getting this movie? And I, I didn't see the, the bride with white hair at the time. Um, I didn't see all that stuff till later. And now I totally fucking get it. Like he's perfect. Like I honestly, like, I, I think Bride of Chucky, that's my, like my second favorite child's play film, by the way. And then, um, you know, a Freddy versus Jason, it's very bold and I didn't think it was bad. It's just takes, it really does blend the two together, but something that Ronnie Yu's very, very good at, I've realized is mixing horror and comedy together. And that's exactly what he does with the trail. Also known as Ju Guai Chat Hung. I'm trying here. Better than Sean. <laughs> so um, I would I would do worse, I believe me. So basically it's these these drug smugglers are, are uh they're they go back and forth and they um are basically told to they're hired by this guy to transport this corpse. Um to this other location. So they do. And, and it's kind of a bumbling group of, you know, these drug smugglers. I think they're mainly uh, dealing with opium and stuff. Um, But they disguise themselves as priests and they go uh, across the way and they get into like a fight. So there is like, it's this also kind of this Western esque type thing, this like barrage of, really random characters that uh, all have like, you know, they all have their thing that they can do. It's not like magic or anything like that. It's just that, you know, they all have like kind of a, a specialty, you could say like magnificent seven type shit. So um, they lose the body in the swamp and then they go back and they basically say the job is done. And then uh, this swamp I somehow uh, transforms this body into a monster, which is basically a vampire. And then it starts killing uh, people along the way and then hunting them down. So it's basically them banding together again to fight this thing and to kill it. 
and kind of save their uh, little uh, village. And it is fucking good. It has like great horror elements. It, it's really funny how Ronnie Yu can can make something very comical and then write the next scene make it scary and it's just it's it's a really really great talent that he has with this because i'm to the point in one scene where i'm belly laughing no shit belly laughing in this movie i was fucking cracking up janice asked me what was wrong because i don't really laugh like that in movies too much but there's a there's a gag in the film where they they um they're scared so the kind of leader says if you see the thing start croaking like a frog <laughs> So they basically practice. They're like, what do you, what does a frog sound like? So they all start doing it and it's really fucking funny. And then when they start seeing the monster, they start doing it, but it's shot in such a way where the monster's scary, but they're croaking like a fucking frog. It really, it had me rolling. It was really fucking funny. Um, but anyways, it, it's got great cinematography. It's got good action sequences. The monster's really great as far as like practical effects. I do not know how they didn't get sued, but the score is 100% lifted from the thing. Like from the very beginning, like as soon as it started, it has that like bump, bump. And I'm like, uh, what is that? I know that sound. And then it just goes. And I'm like, like they just use basically like a different key. <laughs> to, on the synthesizers to make the uh, you know to do that uh, i can't do it with my voice but that, well, this that came out song. a year after the thing in theaters allegedly according to imdb so what if what if john carpenter saw this and it you know it, 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 before it was released or something and, and stole the score from this highly huh? doubtful <laughs> highly doubtful <laughs> So, okay. um, All right. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 really fucking funny and it's just it's really good. And honestly, it's one of my favorites uh, that I've uh, that I probably will see this year. It's it's legitimately like a great movie. And it's it's <clears throat> it's, it's it's crazy to me again, because I was talking about Los Enchiladas, is that there's so many foreign countries that have the best movies that just never fucking get over here. And it drives me crazy because I do think there's a market for it. It's, but I, I, I kind of went off on a tangent. I don't know. A um, few weeks ago on Twitter, it, it's something that like, I understand that our comfort food is rewatching something we like. Like if you're in a bad place or had a bad day, it's, it's, it's good to watch something that you'll know you like. I get it. But there's also a time where you just need to watch something else. Branch, don't don't listen to the people on Twitter. What's trending? I I don't give a shit if if Shutter has a new movie out that you can't wait to see. That movie will be there. Trust me, it will always be there. Like try well, to branch access out. is a big thing too. You can get you can get imports like crazy. I've been importing movies since I was a little kid. No shit. Can I see this one easily? No. <laughs> no. But I'm not saying I said that before I saw this movie stuff. But there's there's plenty of films out there from multiple countries that are really good that actually do, I oh, don't disagree. I just watched you say that. On, on DVD and Blu-ray. <laughs> and and it's crazy because this was produced by one of the biggest companies in Hong Kong and it's virtually like unheard of. It's mm -hmm. it's crazy to me because it's it's I, I've watched a lot of Hong Kong movies and I mean honestly I Korea and Hong Kong have the best fucking movies in general but it's crazy how much stuff doesn't actually get over here thankfully that doesn't really happen anymore because we have like Wellgo Entertainment and other companies that really thrive in 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 uh, obtaining and and getting those films out here but you know from the late the, the basically the early 2000s up until like you know the 80s it, it, or back into the 80s it's really tough we had to have companies like arrow that are helping yeah. with a lot of these things and 88 films is a pretty good job over there with you know kind of the shaw brothers produced films but all also those are the fucking shaw brothers like it's easy to get those are obtainable movies you know because run run would put all that shit out run run shaw rest in peace but <laughs> 
Yeah, no, it's I, I, and honestly, it's just not because of this, I, but it, it's something that I I personally like to do. I like to sit down and try to find something that I've never even heard of before and give it a chance and then champion it and then try to get other people on board. You know, um, working for a distributor, luckily, I have a lot more, uh, you know, quote unquote power to help make that happen. Um, but, you know, it's it's. Uh, just more people would do it because the more people talk about it, the more people are going to take notice and they do pay attention. Like people do pay attention to what you're watching and see, but you know, I understand you want to watch the Spiria for the 87th time or fucking, you know, watch big trouble in little China again, but those films will always be there until the end of time. So, but yeah, just branch out. It's, it, you know, take a risk, watch warriors of virtue, Sean. Yeah, I plan on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Steph, we're, we're, Stephanie. Um, a little bit. I of... know you're running out of time. Brad doesn't so, care, but don't worry, Sean. I care. One more for you. One more for me, and then we'll wrap up. No, I'm gonna do three, but I'm gonna Damn do it. them very quickly. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I saw the <laughs> flying in the face of what Brad just said. I saw the director's <laughs> cut of Doctor Sleep. Uh, three hours. It's incredible. It, in my mm -hmm. opinion, the the Stephen King adaptation that most feels like you're actually reading one awesome. of his books. And uh, something I love about his books that not every single movie that comes out based on his books has is a sense of location. And this had such a sense of location that I literally just felt like I was reading a Stephen King book. Maybe actually Dr. Sleep. Why not? We'll go with that one. But it was incredible. I loved it. And um, I finally saw The Wax Mask, which is another uh, House of Wax uh, kind of riff. Um, Argento, of course, he set it up for Fulci to direct. He unfortunately passed away before he could do it. So he got um, Sergio Stivaletti to uh, do it, who is an effects artist who worked on Phenomenon and so many films for him. And it's, I I really enjoyed his bonkers because it's <laughs> mid-90s. It's mid-90s. I was, I was waiting, I was waiting for you to say what you really thought about it. <laughs> no, it, so it, it's smack in the middle of the 90s and you can feel it, but they're still trying to channel kind of a gothic thing. And I, I, it's really disjointed and goofy in that kind of way. Yeah. Um, but I, I thought it was a really interesting exercise, especially if you are into Fulci, you can kind of see like there are scenes where it'd be like a long shot and I'd be like, ah, oh, Fulci would have started that with a close up and then would have gone out. So if you're kind of a interest in that kind of thing it's a lot of fun it's uneven it's messy but i think it's worth seeing and if you're into italian horror it's going to appeal to you anyway yeah and it's I, it's got some it's got some cool shit but all overall it's kind of yeah falls flat and i very randomly clicked on um a documentary called master of dark shadows it's on Prime right now. It's about the making of the show Dark Shadows, which oh, I, cool. I've seen maybe one episode of. Um, but I always love the concept that there is a daytime soap that had like vampires and people set on fire. And it's awesome. I can say as someone who doesn't know that much about the show, it's very interesting. It's really funny. Everyone's very passionate, has awesome footage of, of them being like swarmed by teenage girls in the 70s and bloopers and it's it's a great story about doing something very unexpected and making it work even though everyone's like no you can't do a gothic horror like in the middle of the day after general hospital what are you talking about <laughs> but they made it work it, it's it's really well done so i recommend that if you like documentaries very nice i'll have to check that one out i love documentaries all yeah. right um, so uh, this one will be fun to have a little discussion about Brad because, uh, you and I had completely different takes on it <laughs> and, uh, you probably too, Stephanie, but for some you're reason, gonna, you're I really loved it. You're going to leave me upset, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I like shows. But we, we I want to do, um, I'm carving out time for next week, next Sunday morning, same time. 
we have a lot more to discuss. So we'll we're gonna try to make this uh you know happen more often. So there's not we don't you know you don't have the uh, the long gap between uh, us discussing a shit. But um, let's talk about the movie Snatchers. Uh, I had no. a lot of fun <laughs> with this movie. Well, what cut have we all seen? That's I don't know, and that's what that's the the interesting <laughs> part about this. Um, it's directed by Steven Cedars and Benji Kleiman. And it's, you know, it's a comedic take on the woman or high school student, in this case, impregnated by an alien. Um, and, you know, the the dialogue in this is so, like, out there. And at first I was like, oh, fuck. Like, this is going to be stupid. And then I kind of just kind of was like, well, they're, they're high school kids in, you know, 2019. Like, yeah, they're probably going to talk like this because you know my daughter's in high school and uh high schoolers are dumb but um but you know it's it's a basic take on you know on that kind of pregnant by alien you know trope it's messy it's uh it's splattery um there's it's definitely a comedy and uh i just had a lot of fun with it with the practical effects with uh, i mean they look goofy they look straight out of like (laughs) It's puppet, you know, they're puppet effects. And, uh, you know, so so the whole setup is she's a virgin. I think she's, yeah, she's a virgin. She has sex with her uh, her idiotic, moronic, douchebag bro boyfriend. And uh, the next day she wakes up pregnant. And uh, there's a, there, the, the birth scene is a sight to behold. And that's when I was like, sold on this film and it was just okay i, I knew what it was like um this is a goofy funny movie I, I went with it it was midnight when i watched it i had a blast and it kind of checked off all the boxes that i was looking for um but brad i want to know like what was it because you i was like hey everybody check out this movie <laughs> you were like i fucking hated this thing so i want to know like what about it did, did you not like because i'm one because you saw this at festival run and uh, what, what what did you hate about this movie, Brad? Well, Sean, I <laughs> like you. I enjoyed the first first act. Okay, I thought the first act was strong. I was enjoying it. Um, after the birth of the monster, I then got very very tired of the actors. Um, they just kept doing the same thing. They weren't very funny. I thought the dialogue was horrendous um i hated all the characters i hated uh the locations the party i just thought it was dumb um i just felt the whole film was dumb like it just didn't work i felt it was incredibly disjointed um it felt like it was all over the place it felt like they needed a new edit for the film um the special effects were fine but then they got really stupid looking uh, later on, it felt like when it's like uh, attached to like their head, it's like kind of like riding them like piggyback. Yeah, right? it's just it's just dumb. I like that. Um, just didn't just nothing nothing really worked for me, and it did start off strong, but like I said, it it quickly uh, fell apart. Huh. Well, I'm and wondering. I'm, I'm right in the middle of you too. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm wondering since you saw it, in, I'm wondering if there is has been a re edit for this because well, initially it was a tv show it was a pilot and they were trying to get a tv show off the ground like okay. it was a youtube youtube and they, honestly like i was fuming after the film and then they said <laughs> that and i'm like of course it fucking is because it looks like a fucking youtube movie it looks like something that would be uh you know basically angled to uh appeal to that type of quick you know, edit dumb mm-hmm. videos that are fucking in pl- plethora of online on YouTube. Yeah, I get it. It, and just they... makes, it just makes total sense. And yeah. it, like, it really did feel like it was a movie that was incomplete and like, it just, it just didn't work. And maybe they did edit again. Maybe it's better. Uh, you know, maybe I'll watch it with Willow. I always give movies a second shot that I hate. <laughs> yeah, I think if it was 20 minutes and they kept the birth scene, that'd be an awesome 20 minute movie. But yeah, you know, I, I, I just, can see what you're saying. It runs out of gas really fast. Yeah. But the thing is, it's like, it's not even one of those things where it's slowly like it just coasts on fumes. It's literally 
like a full tank of gas and then the gas tank is removed and the car stalls and then you just have to sit there for an hour waiting on something that happened and it never does yeah just when you, like your car down when you saw it did it like take over like the grocery store and have like a big old pod like sitting there i like the grocery that. store I mean, it's yeah. like a convenience okay. store or something. Convenience store. Yeah, i don't think they thought anything <clears throat> additional i just Maybe they messed with the edit a little bit, which the, I've heard, which I've heard, but I haven't confirmed. Yeah. And honestly, if I watched it, I'm not going to remember because I was so irritated watching the movie. <laughs> was, yeah, this is look. one where you were very jittery. Because <laughs> <laughs> you guys saw it together at, at yeah, South by, right? Yeah, I was right? right next to him. I was like, oh, he's not like this one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Well, they, they, I'm wondering, that would be uh, something on a I've been trying to, fiercely Googling, trying to see if they've re-edited it, but they, they wouldn't admit to that, probably. No, but the no, one the one thing that I will say about it, and I kind of just let it slide, was kind of the weird little boop doop doo doo like, like weird little, like, sound effects and weird little, like, music YouTube. aside into it. Like, it was when you said YouTube, it makes complete sense, because that, oh, because... YouTube. Ugh. That's if what you, it does. It's, it's if the, you have it's, kids and you've seen the shit that they watch on YouTube, it is enough to to freaking fry your brain and want to just murder cute little animals. I'll be very animal. I'll be. I won't. I won't specifically say which animal because I'll have that specific animal lover after animals, me. Mainly, you just want to punch babies. <laughs> or or that punch Almost babies. Hurt an animal. No, I know, but it, you know, it, oh, the only you, thing that Snatchers made me do was almost give up on cinema in general. I'm never <laughs> watching it. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, it, 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 oh uh, man, no, this one's all over the board. Like, like people, there are people uh, who love had a lot like of fun it, with it. I yeah. will give it that. I have heard a lot of good things about yeah. it since it has like been released. But see, Brad's on. He's he's bored of us. Brad's yeah, I, of this I, conversation. Hate, I hate this movie. It's making me <laughs> sleeping. Yeah. You'd rather be asleep than talk about oh, it. Oh, man. All right. Well, we have to wrap up. I have to uh, I have to hit the road and drive to 29 Palms um, for my audiobook stuff. Transition into my new... Talk about my new podcast real quick. Uh, wow. It, it is called... It is called Audiobooks from Hell. I am discussing um, horror and genre-specific uh, titles, books that I've narrated but also fellow narrators who specifically hover in that arena um i am talking to publishers who publish horror and genre specific stuff and who are bringing back like 80s paperback horror movie or horror books um in the vein of like vinegar syndrome and synapse there are a few kind of boutique uh publishers interested in bringing back these kind of forgotten 80s paperbacks which is a lot of fun um and I'll be interviewing some authors. I know there's an author by the name of William Scholl who was like huge around the 80s, but pumped out a lot of stuff. And I'll be um, talking to him about his books. So it's kind of a cool, like, you know, way to kind of um, bring some light on a lot of awesome horror and uh, like sci science fiction, fantasy, but like not like the mainstream kind of. It's just like with movies, there's a lot of bullshit in the mainstream stuff. But I'm trying to find things that are in, just offbeat and different, and discuss to those, discuss them with those creators and, and stuff. So, um, audiobooks from hell is the name of it, and you can just, if you follow me on Twitter, you've probably already seen me blasting that out. But you can just find it in iTunes and stuff. But that's my spiel about that. It's All a right? good spiel. It's fun. It's, it's gonna be a fun one, and it's I'm already talking to these people anyway. So uh, while I'm working, I can just hit someone up on Skype and be like, hey, let's. You know, talk for 30 minutes. They're, I'm trying to keep them like 30 to 45 minutes. Um, and um, so we'll see. So that's it. Um, now I want to turn it over to you two to tell me what you have been working on, if there's anything you'd like to plug or, or anything. And I know Brad never does, but, uh, you know, Brad stays neutral with things that he's working on. Yeah, I'm going to be like Brad and play it cool. <laughs> okay. I'm the asshole. I'm the self-promoting yeah, well, asshole. Well, actually, I have a few things I would like to plug. <laughs> ah, cool. I'm the Brad this episode. <laughs> What's up? I, I'm just fucking with you. God damn it. All right. Well, damn it. you can find us over at thescreamcast.com. All of our social media links are there. And um, follow us and friend us in all those places and talk to us about movies and, and, and the podcast and stuff. Um, you can find us on Twitter, scream underscore cast. And um, I think that's about it. So 
we're going to be back next week with a more kind of another round of this and uh mike hopefully mike will be joining us and um we're going to keep this crazy thing going cool yeah all right yeah all right. we'll talk to all of you talk next you time later. bye bye oh don't tell me you're leaving the party's just begun